Since the discovery by Charles Lyell that layers of rock represent geological time, paleontologists have marveled at the variety of creatures that roam the Earth in eons past. From dinos to dodos, millions of creatures have left their mark on the fossil record, with over 99% of all species that ever lived now extinct. Often branching out into all sorts of bizarre body types, most lasted no longer than a measly 10 million years. Let's take a look at a few interesting cases of how they've come and gone. Our ancestors were no exception. During the awkward phase of mammalian development in the early Permian period, our distant relatives, the synapsids, were not quite mammal, not quite reptile. Some tried to outcompete early dinosaurs for world domination, but since most were no larger than house cats, that didn't really pan out so hot. From domination to rumination. Meet the Nigosaurus, also called the cow of the Mesozoic. This fella had a mouth like the slot of a vacuum, hundreds of teeth, a paper thin skull, and a long neck that made it the perfect eating machine. Unfortunately, the Nigosaurus likely became over specialized, making it vulnerable to changes in climate and prey to more aggressive fiends. As first articulated in the origin of species, organic beings vary in the stages of their organization, and nowhere is this more apparent than in those who once populated New Jersey. The saber-toothed herring. A small fish with large fangs, the saber-toothed herring was a predator to smaller fish. But alas, it too wasn't fierce enough. Remains of these fish are often found in the stomachs of larger predators like sharks, and they didn't even survive past the Eocene. In the Cenozoic period, the Stevens Island wren was a nocturnal songbird that lived off the coast of New Zealand, and was one of the only flightless songbirds ever discovered. Found in a critically endangered state in 1892, it was almost completely wiped out two years later by a single animal, a cat named Tibbles belonging to the lighthouse keeper of the island. While some accounts suggest that Tibbles was wholly responsible for their end, a more recent account suggest it was a large pack of feral cats that must have contributed. After all, how much can one cat devour? And what about the pig-footed bandicoot? These critters are so adorable. They're nocturnal, kitten-sized, and the only bandicoots to have tiny hoops instead of toes. In 1857, they caught the attention of famed Australian naturalist Gerald Kraft, who obtained two of the last living specimens. But unfortunately for the bandicoots, Kraft soon ran short of rations, and later wrote in his journal, I'm sorry to say that my appetite more than once overruled my love for science. Bandicoots eaten. Other unfortunate species, the Paraceratherium, the Zooglodon, the Elephant Bird, Therizinosaurus, Canistrophius, the Quagga, the Blue Bug. Natural selection suggests that only the best adapted individuals will survive, but the environment that determines success is mostly a matter of chance, or not. Which makes me wonder, how will humans fare? With volcanoes, oil spills, pandemics, and diminishing resources, some fear that the end is nigh for the human race. But for others' fears, the next step in human evolution might circumvent biology altogether for a more efficient alternative, trading classical evolution for a more selective approach to the ultimate transcendence of the species. From roots unearthed to branches preened in one fell swoop, pools overflowing or drying up to dust, insatiable appetites are, after all, only natural.